The story of Cupid and Psyche comes to us from the ancient Roman novel Metamorphosis by Lucius Apulius Madarensis, or Platonicus, which was written in the 2nd century CE. As the story goes, Psyche, born as a mortal woman, is so beautiful, her beauty rivals that of the goddess Aphrodite. So Aphrodite commands her son Cupid to make her fall in love with an unworthy man. However, Cupid falls in love with Psyche himself. But that is not where the story ends, nor is it all that happens along the way. Stick around to know the story of Psyche and Cupid, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Once upon a time, a king and a queen gave birth to three daughters, but only the third daughter of theirs possessed unearthly beauty. She was Psyche. Her beauty was so astounding, the poverty of language is unable to express its due praise. Rumors spread of this girl, Psyche's astounding loveliness, eventually reaching the ears of the Greek goddess Aphrodite. The great Greek goddess of love and beauty, Aphrodite, was born from the foam near the island of Cyprus, for which reason she is referred to the Cyprian. Aphrodite was a jealous goddess, but she was also very passionate. Not only did she love the men and gods in her life, but her sons and grandchildren as well. Sometimes her possessive instincts led her too far. Furious that so many mortals were comparing Psyche's beauty to her own, and in many ways claiming that the mortals surpassed her, Aphrodite sent a plague to her kingdom, and let it be known that the only way the land could get back to normal was to sacrifice Psyche. The king, who was Psyche's father, tied Psyche up and left her to death at the hands of some presumed fearsome monster. It can be noted here that this isn't the first time in Greek mythology that this happened. The great Greek hero Perseus found his bride Andromeda tied up as prey for a sea monster. In the case of Psyche, it was Aphrodite's son Cupid who released the princess. However, Aphrodite had called upon her son Cupid that he use one of his arrows of desire to ensure Psyche fall in love with a human monster. Obedient as always to his mother, Cupid descended to the earthly plane to do as she wished. Yet, he was so astonished himself by the mortal princess's beauty that he mistakenly shot himself. From that moment, Cupid was irrevocably in love with the princess. Around this time, it became evident to the parents that Psyche's attractiveness had angered the gods, as no mortal man would take her hand in marriage. Imploring the temple of Apollo, they learned that Psyche was destined for a much worse fate than celibacy. The virgin is destined for the bride of no mortal lover. Her future husband awaits her on the top of the mountain. He is a monster whom neither gods nor men can resist. Psyche, conscious of the mistakes of her mortal kingdom for praising her so highly, was content to follow the oracle's advice. From the top of the highest cliff, dressed in funerary garbs, Psyche was swept away by the west wind, Zephyr. She was brought to a striking valley in the center of which stood a palace so magnificent it could not have been built by the hands of any other than the god. Surrounded by the luscious trees with a crystalline fountain at its heart, Psyche soon concluded that this golden hole would be her new home, further reiterated by the voice of her new husband echoing through the halls. Unfortunately for the young couple, Cupid and Psyche, Aphrodite was not the only one trying to foul things up. Psyche had two sisters, who were very jealous, just as Aphrodite was. Unbeknownst to Psyche, her wonderful lover and husband was Cupid himself. There was one odd thing about their relationship. He made sure Psyche never saw what he looked like. Psyche didn't mind. She had a fulfilling life with her husband in the dark, and during the day, she had all the luxuries she could ever want. When the sisters learned about the luxurious, extravagant lifestyle of their lucky, beautiful sister, they urged Psyche to pry into the area of his life that Psyche's husband kept hidden from her. Cupid was a god, and as beautiful as he was, he did not want his mortal wife to see his form. Psyche's sisters didn't know he was a god, although they may have suspected it. However, they did know that Psyche's life was much happier than theirs. Knowing their sister well, they preyed on her insecurities and persuaded Psyche that her husband was a hideous monster. Psyche assured her sisters they were wrong, but since she'd never seen him, 
even she started having doubts. Psyche decided to satisfy the girl's curiosity, and so one night, she took a candle and looked at her sleeping husband. Cupid's divine form was exquisite, and Psyche stood there transfixed, staring at her husband in the light of the candle. While Psyche dawdled, a bit of wax dripped on her husband, and instantly, her abruptly awakened, irate, disobeyed, injured husband god flew away. I see, I told you she was a no good human, said his mother Aphrodite. Now you'll have to be content among the gods. Cupid might have gone along with the separation, but Psyche couldn't. Impelled by the love of her beautiful husband, she implored her mother-in-law to give her another chance. Aphrodite agreed. There were conditions. Aphrodite had no intention of playing fair. She devised four tasks. Not three, as is conventional in mythic hero quests. Each task was more exacting than the last. Psyche passed the first three challenges, but the last task was too much for her. The four tasks were 1. Sort a huge amount of barley, millet, poppy seeds, lentils, and beans. During this task, the ants help her sort the grains within the time allotted. Number 2. Gather a hank of the wool of the shining golden sheep. In this case, a reed tells her how to accomplish this task without being killed by the vicious animals. Number 3. Fill a crystal vessel with the water of the spring that feeds the sticks and cactus. During this task, an eagle helps her out. Number 4. Aphrodite asks Psyche to bring her back a box of Persephone's beauty cream. Going to the underworld was a challenge for the bravest of the Greek mythical heroes. Demigod Hercules could go to the underworld with ease, but human Theseus had trouble and had to be rescued by Hercules. Psyche, however, was confident when Aphrodite told her she would have to go to the most dangerous regions known to the mortals. The voyage was easy, especially after a speaking tower told her how to find the entryway to the underworld. The part of the fourth task that was too much for Psyche was to bring back the beauty cream. The temptation was too great to make herself more beautiful, to use the cream she procured. If the perfect beauty of the perfect goddess Aphrodite needed this underworld beauty cream, Psyche reasoned how much more would it help an imperfect mortal woman. Thus, Psyche retrieved the box successfully, and then she opened it and fell into a death-like sleep, as Aphrodite had secretly predicted. At this point, divine intervention was called for if the story were to have an ending that would make anyone actually happy. With Zeus's connivance, Cupid brought his wife to Olympus, where at Zeus's command, she was given nectar and ambrosia so she could become immortal. In Olympus, in the presence of the other gods, Aphrodite reluctantly reconciled with her pregnant daughter-in-law, who was about to give birth to a grandchild Aphrodite would dot on, hedony in Greek or pleasure in English. If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel for more videos like this one.